All right, we back again. Y'all know what time it is. It's R.E.O.P. Your boy, Mr. J. It's your boy, Amber Valley, man. Like my co-host said, another episode of R.E.O.P., man. We got yes, a special sir. guest in the building, man. I got to salute this brother, man. He came all the way from Tallahassee. How far of a drive that is? Man, it was about like two hours, 30 minutes. Two hours. He about his shit, man. He I'm drove two you, hours in for the interview, man. So we got to give him a round of applause for that just alone. Nigga, you- oh. yeah. I hit oh, the wrong wait, one. Look what that money Yeah, I forgot, we got, I, forgot we got, I forgot we got to do sound, boy. Probably hit the wrong one. We'll edit that in, man. But uh, Mr. 1K, man. What's up? What's up? Salute to you. So What's you up? say you're not from Tallahassee. Yeah. You're from Lakeland. Yeah, AC is 3 on um, Polk County. Okay. okay. So how the music scene out there in Lakeland? Um, Really, like, it's, like, local. You know, it's not really, like, too big right now. But, you know, it's got, we got some, like, big artists, like, 350. And like OTF, Tito, he he coming up and stuff like that. So it's like people coming up, Lil Rhino and stuff like that. But like, I don't know, the scene ain't too like huge right now. Got you, got you. Yeah. How you feel like uh, things have benefited you since you've been at school up in Tally? Man, really like school like alone has like gave me like too many opportunities. So um, like that's why I got my first performance. Like I had that in front of like 3,000 people. That's what's up. And that's crazy, you know, for like your yeah. first one, no cap. It was like big but you know i knew i wanted it so i just had one that went through with it but yeah like school alone like you get connections and like you get around people that's like like-minded like you so then you really just lock in and then you can just make more music promote it better you know collaborate with people and all that really for sure yeah so let me ask you when you had performed in front of the three thousand people yeah do you feel like that was like too much pressure for you for your first performance man like really i'm gonna be real like it definitely <coughs> was but like yeah. I had I had really just conquered it like really like like my homeboy had told me it's like a mindset thing like it's yeah. not like if you look at it as fear then mm-hmm. it's gonna be fear but if it's excitement then you gotta look at it as that so I said you know I've been one of the you know have my first performance since I was you know like 14 15 right we think about rapping you know me and my boy we freestyling in the bus and you know what I mean but then like I just went up there I just had my shades on I said you know had a little gas before, just a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was a little floating, but really it was just smooth, and then I just rocked out, really. And then That's my boys was out there supporting, man. You know, shout out to Pope Boys, you know, A63 shit. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So how long have you been rapping now? Right Recording, now, you know, actually pursuing it seriously. I'd say, like, really, like, serious. this is really year one for me. Okay. But I've been rap. like, I done, you know, dropped some music. It was about, like, two, three years ago, but... It wasn't nothing serious. It was like side stuff, you know. Right, right. Yeah. So you dropped your first project this year. Uh, well, shit, not too long ago, right? Yeah, it was like right. It was right before the year started. I think in December. Okay, so um, I mean, technically, that would still be you know twenty three according to the music release mm-hmm. schedule and such. But um, thousand roses, man. Let's talk about it. What oh, yeah. uh, what inspired the name? Man, I really like. A thousand rows, you know, it's just like I'm one K. So, you know, really I just thought about like giving roses out and it was like a February thing. So really that was the promotion content. So, you know, it was just a thousand roses. I got a thousand roses for one girl, you know what I mean? Just for well, her type shit, you know. I heard that. I heard yeah. that. So with your name, what does the one K mean to you? What does a thousand mean to you? Man, really one K just like it's a brand because like I never been like into the gang scene or nothing like that. So you right, know, people right. made you know associated with that. But for me, really, it's just like a brand of like keeping it real, like truth and come through honesty. Because like at the end of the day, that's what like really pushes people and what really inspire people and shit. Like being truthful with them, you know. For sure, for sure. Oh, I didn't know um one K. Some people like. Put that with the gang shit. I I didn't know. I, I feel like you know, know it's it's. I don't know. They be connecting stuff to everything. You, you ain't know? lying. <laughs> I'll be like, nah, I ain't associated. No affiliation. <laughs> <laughs> no affiliation. So when I had first seen your name, I thought you was affiliated. You know, uh, Dumar. Yeah, Dumar. It's a rapper out here named Dumar One K. You know what's crazy? When I looked up my name, like first I had seen him. Yeah. yeah. He, I think he has a song called Mr. One K or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure you do. Yeah, and I was like, oh well, shit, it's another One K. Fuck it, we might have to collab. You yeah. Know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who knows? Yeah, because when you first said us up, I was about to hit up Dumar. I was like, see if he was your artist. You was his artist or something like that. Oh, yeah. But then I had kind of like, I was like, I don't think so. I don't, right, I, right. I, yeah. I didn't want to just like ask, like, hey, you know this nigga? But, <laughs> yeah, especially but yeah. I'm from out of the way. Yeah. 
So, uh, I mean, I got to say, I, I definitely got to salute you again. I mean, um, for this to be your first year, you definitely making some noise. We chopped it up a little bit on IG a while back, and um, you had told me about some of your shows, man. Let's get into that. Who are some of the artists that you've opened up for and things like that? Uh, so, I haven't opened up for any artists yet. So, okay. my first show was the performance in front of the house, and that was 3,000 people. And then I had a show up in Atlanta at Monaco, and that was really just a showcase, like artist showcase. So, really, I'm just looking at more like places to perform at right now. It was a performance opportunity today actually, but I had locked in with this. So I just had went ahead and, you know, went through do with this. Cause it's, you know, something I would like to do type show. Yeah, for sure. We appreciate you following through, man. Yeah, yeah. Um, so let's get back to the project, man. Um, short, quick EP. Mm -hmm. um, was there was there a lot of thought into it? Would you were you set on just doing three songs? Did you want to keep it limited? How how, how give us the rollout on that? Yeah, it's crazy that you bring that up because actually I was it was like supposed to be like four or five songs, but the craziest thing happened. I record in the booth everything. I got the song. I'm about to release it. They send my release back. I'm like, what? What's my release sent back for? I go to check. It says someone else already has the song with the with the with that beat. I'm uh, like, there's just no way, you know. And it's <laughs> one of my hardest, like, so it's just an unreleased I have right now. So I just had cut that out, and then I ended up cutting one more out just because it wasn't, you know, it wasn't up to par. But really, it was a, um, it was a thought out release. I really just put some like true, like, you know, emotions into it. Really, just like said some shit. Really, you know. So what happened with the beat? Did like your your producer sell sell it to somebody else or something like that? Yeah, or? I guess it was already sold to him. I just uh, didn't know. I had assumed it was you know up for yeah. grabs, but uh, you know, shit. I just had said fuck damn, it. Damn, I didn't know they had that technology that. Can pick oh yeah. That up. Well, when yeah. it's registered properly, yeah. yeah. Oh okay. Yeah. Yeah. If you register it properly, then you can't. You know, it'll, ain't nothing. Ain't no way around it. Wherever it get played, you will get a check. Salute <laughs> that. Salute to you doing the groundwork, getting your shit done right, because you don't want to. Sure. You don't want that cease and desist letter. That'd be man. nasty. Even with, uh, I would say, for this being your first project, man, you definitely going about things the right way. Got all your platform. I mean, all the streaming platforms and session, uh, the DSPs. You got those on lock. Yeah. Uh, how's the how's it, how have things been since the release for you? Uh, really like this. So this is my first release for this year, and this was my EP, and I dropped the album last year in 2022. That was called Me Too, and mm -hmm. like. That was my real release that had some traction behind it and man really like that showed me that like i got some support behind me really like i didn't realize you know rapping that you know i had some people that would actually like tune in and stuff it was just like you know i do this put it out you know for my kids or something right but then like overall i had seen some people really screaming i look at the numbers i'm like okay damn i ain't this you know like right, right. the first time i dropped the song the numbers hit like 26 views like that's nothing that ain't nothing you know? right right but like yeah you gotta start somewhere i'm telling at you at the end of the day you know i'm telling you hey look we all been there you know yeah for <laughs> a fact but yeah they really just like pushed me to keep on like just dropping music and like getting to a larger audience because at the end of the day you know if some people mess with it then you got to see like okay put it out to the people see yeah. if everybody else really got the you know taste for that or whatever right right you know? so when it comes to promoting your music like what's your approach to it Honestly, I try to be as like creative as possible. Like okay. I be trying to lock in on different like video ideas. I can't put out anything that ain't quality. Like at the end of the day, I try to do like high quality videos that you know really grab their attention and, and keep you like into it. But I've been trying to lock in on that more this semester, you know, because um I got like TikTok and stuff, so I'll be locking in on there and I got a little bit of traction on there. But I'm trying to you know build it out more in the rap scene rather than because I got like content that's like for like funny and stuff right like right that, which, you, know, you heard, you heard everybody get rid of tiktok <laughs> they, they they got a big campaign going against tiktok hey, right man. now man they already <laughs> banned it at our school like the wi word yeah you can't oh, even word. pull it up how that works so you just like you just can't pull it that's, that's crazy that's bro <laughs> anytime you pull it up and say no internet connection you could keep on scrolling it was only it'll only be one video and it'll be paused i'm like that's man, nice. did they give y'all a reason why they banned it at the school Honestly, I don't even know. Like, it, it, I think they sent out an email, but I didn't read it. I don't, really, I don't use TikTok <laughs> that much. And I got, right, you know, right. I got my own service. So. Nigga said, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's funny, man. But nah, that's dope. Um, if if TikTok does go down, man, you got a plan in place for how you'll pivot things. And honestly, yeah, like I feel like TikTok isn't like a major platform. I feel like right. at the end of the day, it is like a really 
easy way to get a lot of attention really fast. But, mm-hmm. like, at the end of the day, if you really know how to go about the promotion the right way and you reach out to the right platforms and, and you put the work in, you get the collaborations in, then, you know, you don't need to 100% do TikTok. Like, right, right. At the end of the day. Yeah, people be judging them, but I'm loving these promo pages, too. Man, for honest. real, man. Look, I salute. Yep. Shout out to the rap. Come up. Um, Matt, bro, he's doing a hell of a job with his platform. Um, uh, uh, Duval promo, yeah, you know Duval what I mean? Promo. Shout out to them. They're they getting a lot of eyes on the city, a lot of eyes on, you know. Uh, and I'm, I'm sure y'all got some down in Tallahassee, of course, especially yep. um, with, with FAM and FSU. But... Um, yeah, man, I think that those those pages help a lot, man. Uh, especially the, all the Florida pages are going crazy right now, doing yeah. big numbers. Yeah, you got little Tyler coming up. He from out of Tally, so you know. Yep. They after they see him coming up, everybody in the city coming up. It's a whole motion music movement right now, really. Yeah, yeah, my okay. favorite, my favorite nigga. I talk about him every week. We is having. He yeah, tell yeah. Him, well, we're hard. We're <laughs> he going crazy. Right now. Okay. So, how is the music scene like in Tallahassee versus Lakeland? Man, really, I think, like, from what I just gained, you know, like, I'm kind of new, but from yeah. what I gained, it's way larger. Like, it's a lot of people that I see in Tally that's actually on it. Like, you see them on the promo pages. Like, you could tell who in the rap scene by the promo pages, really. Like, right, if you're right. in the right scenes and stuff. But, like, I be seeing way more Tally rappers than I've seen. I've seen maybe a few Lakeland rappers. A lot of Lakeland rappers promote to, like, the city of Lakeland. Mm-hmm. And not really. They don't go out to, like official Florida promo or like, I don't know, like, you know, like more wide scenes. Right, right. For real. So sound wise, what's the difference? It's definitely like, it's like, I feel like they just be, I don't know. It's like they be hitting, like it just be every, everything like from Tally be like hitting. That's why I was <laughs> fucking with it. Like you got that Boston. Um, there's this one dude I had seen, he he, he be on the ground. He uh, name like Fetty. And it be just hitting. I'd be like, okay, that just, I just like a beat that like hit, and it make you want to just like, yes, yeah. like you know, slide to that beat, really. So yeah, I was uh, so in Jacksonville, we got like more of the drill scene. It's kind of like uh, transitioning like, over to what the Tallahassee. So yeah, apparently like yeah. they dubbed it motion music now. Yeah, <laughs> it's Before, crazy. I used to call That's it crazy. just get money music, but now they call it motion music, which kind of make it makes it sense. makes a lot of sense, and I fuck with that honestly. That's crazy. It's crazy. I said that like before I ever heard anybody say that. Like I was like, it's just motion music. After, yeah, yeah. I just heard motion, motion, motion. I'm like, this motion music. I'm yeah, like, no cap. Yeah, cause when you hear the shit, it just like make you. I'd rather hear that than the drill shit. Cause one hundred percent. I don't want to hear about niggas getting put in packs and all that. Yeah, I want to hear right. shit that like inspire me to get money and all yeah. that stuff. So. That's some real shit. Like, so who? My bad to cut you, you up, man. Uh, who are some of your inspirations? Uh, really, I got a wide like assortment of inspirations because I like to have like a a, a wide scene, a, a variety of like influences and stuff. So you know, like my true number one rapper, he J Cole type shit. But, okay. Like I really be in the hard hitting scenes too. I be like fucking with NLE Chopper, his shit tough. Quinn and FN, Splurge. I used to fuck with him when I was like in middle school. His shit tough. Three Fifty, he one of the um, top rappers from Lakeland. I had just collab with him on the um, track just. Friday that just dropped, but he was like, you know, he one of the ones that when you was listening to him, you like, okay, they, he kind of got that like Lakeland vibe to him, like culture type shit. So right, right. I really just drew inspiration from them, and then you know, it it just, it just come together type shit. Gotcha. All right, so let's go to your, your upbringing in Lakeland. Like, how was yep. your childhood like? Um, shit, really back in Lakeland, it was just like a, it was a chill childhood. Like, you know, we wasn't too bad it wasn't nothing like we wasn't bad kids or nothing we was just like chilling with my mom and shit me and my brothers sisters and shit really i was more with my sisters and my brothers because my brothers they was i don't know they be tripping but <laughs> you know, we done we done like started hanging out more now too, yeah yeah shit. yeah since we got like cooler and shit we be like my brother he uh he just became a certified engineer at um Damn, top sound. Or, oh, that's yeah, what's top up. sound down in St. Pete. Okay. But yeah, he um he my main engineer really, so I'd be locking in with him and shit. But Man, that's love. Yeah, no cap. But he like really like hard. Like he done he done came up for real. He was the one who really started me rapping. So really like after he had hit me up on the snap, he said he like, I got a stew, you know what I mean? Come through if you wanna record, just slide through. I'm like shit, what well, we gonna see? I thought he was cap for real, you know. Like, yeah, yeah. He's like, man, that shit gotta be cap. Bro. Yeah, that's all, <laughs> sound too good to be true. You feel <laughs> me? Especially, I'm like, damn, I ain't never rap before. He telling me he can record for me. And shit. Right, right. I'm like, okay, cool. I slide through. 
He recorded me for the first time. Now that I look back, that shit ass. But <laughs> <laughs> when I dropped it though, hey, that shit was tough. No cap. Like, yeah. I thought I was that shit, but yeah, he really started my shit up. Like, I'm assuming, then, I'm assuming rapping is just like comedy. Like, you gonna bomb the first couple tracks, I guess. Yeah. Every time. For sure. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> for sure. It's very few people that they first record is something they can still be proud of, you know what I mean? Years later and shit. But um, that's funny. So, uh, recording with your brother, does he push you to try and take things di- in different directions? Does he, like, encourage your, your your sound as is? You know what I mean? How does he help? I feel like he don't put too much push on it, but he definitely, like, he'll, like, get you right. Like, yeah, record, re-record that. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He ain't the type to just, like, you ain't going to say you got to re-record it. If he know, he going to hear it when you record it. Boom. Right, right. Let me, let me punch you back in. Let me punch you back in. Okay, and then if I'm having a tough time, like with something, like flow wise or something, he'll be like, okay, well, you should just say it like this. I feel like it might sound. Then I'll hit it. I'll be like, okay, let me hear it. Yeah. Boom, tap in. And then he be locking in, like for real. That's important, man. I think that a good engineer is one who does that, who's paying attention to how you sound as you're recording, how it sounds afterwards. If they hear something, they're instantly like, all right, let's redo this because I'll keep this tape, you know what I mean? But I'm going to make sure you get the best of your time. So that's important, man. And it's dope that you got somebody you could say in-house, you know what I mean? Even though he a little ways away. Yeah. But shit, with the you internet, ain't email, nothing. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say. Gmail, really. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so far, what's been some some of your biggest accolades outside of, you know, the uh, your first show? Because, I mean, that one in itself is huge. Um, really like just overall my biggest accolades just being like reaching the right audiences and like really just having people come back to me and tell me like yeah yo shit really hard like you know because at the end of the day I feel like some people just you know they'll comment on your stuff and things like that but I feel like when people come to you and really like stop you in public or something like yeah you know like I seen you perform like that was really tough okay mm-hmm. like cool that was my first performance but like they don't know that so then they just supporting and stuff so I really just like love the support that I have behind me but other than that really it's just it's just been that and then my feature with 350 got you that was really big like because you know we was we grew up listening to him for word real. word like, that's how we was we was 15 14 listening to goddamn what's that shit patience goddamn time of day <laughs> yeah that's dope how did you reach out to him you just you just hit him up and man him yeah up. Shit, I just hit him on the ground. I be honestly, I'm just one of those niggas. I don't care. I just reach out because at the end of the day, like you are gonna get a hundred no's for that yeah. one yes. You know what I mean? So That's shit, some real shit. I had got that one yes, and then shit, we locked in. I was bread ready. I knew I was ready. You know, I'm not gonna reach out to nobody if I'm not, you know, ready to actually collab. But right, yeah. I was in that mode at that time, and then it just worked out. Shit. You know? So when y'all had recorded, were y'all in studio or you did it over email? Yeah, it was an email because I'm pretty sure he be like, you know, move around and shit. And I don't know if he in the Tally area. But, oh, okay, I yeah. got you, got you. So what you made you want to go to school out in Tally? Man, really, shit, I don't even know. I was, I think, I went to like one um, convention for FAMU, and it just happened to be a cool looking school. Mm-hmm. But I really wasn't planning on going to college for real, like out of high school. I was, I was more into like rapping and stuff like that. But I sent in my application. You know, I'm not, I'm not gonna like miss a chance. But I had sent the application in, and then they accepted me. And then you know, ever since then, it's just been the right choice, really. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. No count. Um, nah, I definitely salute that. As a rapper, let me ask you this: So, were you serious about rapping before you went to college? Was that something that you sought out and said, you know, hey, I'm gonna do this? Man, I feel like it was one of those things of like, it was in my mind that mm-hmm. like, yeah, I feel like I got some, but I don't know if I would have actually took it to the next extent that college made me, you know, cause I feel like you, I was more going to be local, seeing, right, right. working, you know, I'm still working at, you know, maybe a warehouse or something, Yeah. but then I go back to the stool and then make some, but uh, it was, I don't know. So I'm going to say this, man, as a rapper, uh, and how old are you? Yeah, 19. 19, man. Psh, let me tell you, you're making one of the best decisions you, you could have. You know, going to college, it, like you said at the beginning, it gives you access to so many resources, huge market of uh, just fans, period, you know, potential fans, rather, uh, just a big audience. Um uh, one thing for sure, you definitely got to utilize all your social platforms, you know what I mean, to market in the best ways because you never know who's watching. But for you to be 19, you know what I mean, and at one of the most notable schools in Florida, you know, um, 
like I say, that's that's one of the best decisions that you could have made, and it seems like you're making the best of it, you know, with everything that you're doing. So, oh yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, for sure, definitely. Uh, keep it up. You know what I mean? Um, cause at Tally, man, that shit could change your life. Man, really? I mean, at Fam, brother. Yeah. Yeah, up in Tally, it's really just it's it's always something to do. Sure. Mm -hmm. Every other motherfucking like weekend, goddamn homecoming, <laughs> goddamn, <laughs> and it's so much. <laughs> So you, you just pretty much started college pretty much. So I bet that's like hard as hell to balance like music and the college. Like cause you got to do your schoolwork. Yeah. You got to party. You got to be with the women and what. Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah, I'm going to be respectable. I ain't going to call them, I, call them that one word. I'm going to call them the ladies. <laughs> be with the ladies. Then you got to do your music. Like how do you balance those? Man, honestly, it is a lot. Um, and really the balance just comes with like time management and like being proactive on shit. Like for real. Like. I ain't realize that like if you do the work as soon as you get it you ain't got to work you worry about it on the back end you know right. i'm worrying about writing a bar or i'm going to worry about hitting the stew yeah. on the back end but like if you sitting here okay i'll do the work later i'll be like okay i'll write whole time i don't even write mm -hmm. i do not write i'd be like uh you know just delaying that too sometimes so then i'd rather be like finished fully on something that has a deadline that i know i can't change rather than you know music you create your own deadlines all right and yeah. you can have a more creative feel for real so like really just the balance just comes from that like being proactive but like man it's so much like for real i just finished this case study um which is pretty much it's like something that you do uh for a company and then they'll have you like finish some work and complete a presentation solve a problem stuff like that and you know we had actually placed finalists for that for top four so we going to new york next week so oh yeah not next week next month but yeah it's like i'm moving around all the time but you know i still got to make time for my fans really like for sure make yeah. time for the music what you major in um business and i just changed my minor to music industry that's dope, that's dope. yeah for sure yeah i had actually had to lock in on that because when I came, it was just business. I, I knew I like business. I like making money, and I, I ran a business myself one time. But like, I had seen, or I actually had heard from my home girl that um, she has a homeboy who's major is music industry. I was like, that's a major. I'm like, I gotta lock in on that. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. A minor, like, right, right. <laughs> but yeah, I had locked in on that, and then like that showed me the course of like what I really want to do with it, and like you know, work into the um work into the music industry mm -hmm. you know through a um position as well you can work through that way as well you know 100 percent. little did it you feel me yeah yeah no cap. yeah common wanting to fam you for uh for music word word yeah and um, i know my bad go ahead you good i was about to i was about to ask about an uh, ignorant ass question i was about to say so you going to new york you gonna make some <laughs> plays while you up there man i was, I was trying <laughs> to see i'm trying to really lock in you might have to sneak out a couple of times make some plays yeah, you know? telling you i'd be trying to be a munch in new york you know what I'm okay shout out ice spice. <laughs> <laughs> let me catch her at a bodega <laughs> nah for real i'm talking about the music you talking yeah about i'm sorry i'm distracted <laughs> <laughs> But nah, uh, New York is definitely a great place to get up there and network. Um, and man, again, I gotta salute you, dog. Like you, you, you. I'm I'm gaining a lot more respect for you talking to you now. But even um, when we talked over Instagram and whatnot, you definitely seem very comfortable reaching out to people and and expressing, you know, what you want to do, how it could benefit both parties and such. Mm -hmm. um, I say do the same for New York, you know, start looking at some of these up and coming drill artists um, and and get them out of their comfort zone. You know what I mean? That's a great opportunity for collabs. We don't see stuff like that enough right now. You know, you don't have many regions that are doing too many collabs uh, regularly. So yeah. that's a great opportunity for you. Okay. I'm definitely going to try to lock in because I'll be seeing they, um, they got them freestyles. Um, I think his name like Gabe NYC. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, off the radar. Them yeah, yeah, yeah. Be super hard. I'm yeah, gonna, you know, like those tough for real. But yeah, I'm gonna try to lock in and you know reach out to whoever I can because I feel like it's just it's so much it's so much accessibility. Like why not? You know right, what I mean? right, right. Yeah. All right. On your last project, if you had to pick like three songs for like the listeners. Let's say somebody watching this right now never heard your music. Yeah. What three songs would you pick? Three songs. Okay. So if you if you trying to get lit, so I start them off lit. They gotta start with Alphabet. Okay. Um, Alphabet gonna be that first hit. You gonna be like, okay, like you gonna get a feel of like that. I got some hard shit. Right. But then I take you to like keep smiling. That's gonna be like you gonna still hear some shit. Yeah. But you not too like you you don't gotta zone in on the music too much because I don't like to make stuff. 
that's too too lyrical right. that you know you into it too much and like you know some people don't want to like read like during like well like not read but you but, know like yeah yeah process the process bars the yeah bars too yeah. much like read into the bars too much i call it brain junk food like you ain't <laughs> gotta use your, your brain at all you yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? but yeah i definitely um do that for keep smiling and then number three would be like materialistic mm. okay yeah that's, that's a good that's, list yeah yeah that's like a chill vibe materialistic for the it's kind of for the girls it could go both ways depending if you you know think about your girl you know what i mean yeah. it's, it's, up to, it's up to them so when you perform what's the song people feel the most definitely alphabet yeah. alphabet okay. alphabet that hitter you know it got that jump to it every time like everybody be like oh yeah i like that beat like that beat got a real like yeah so with that song you said that's seen to be the one that people fuck with the most yeah. you gonna do anything with it you gonna push it uh, really, I've been uh, lacking on the pushing on it, really, because I, I was um, more focused on the future. But honestly, I need to push it more. So that's really what I'm going to lock in on, for real. Yeah, man. Tyler, the creator, said um, he probably said it the best that I've ever heard it articulated. But, you know, too many people make something, post it for a little while and forget about it. You know what I mean? And it's not that you forget about it as the artist, but you, you just let it die down in the background as you're working on the new shit. But it's like, nah, you got to keep your foot on niggas' necks. You got to keep all of that shit in people's face. So uh, I would definitely say go back with all three of those records that you mentioned and not just those because you got some hits now. Um, and even on your last one, my uh, uh, Mood Swings, rather, was one of my favorite records So yeah. from you. Um, I think that it showed a lot about your character. You know what I mean? Like, it, it showed vulnerability and such. So um, I would definitely say use all of what you have in every way that you can so with TikTok, you know you could promote nothing but your new album on on there and then instagram promote last year's album you know what i mean yeah. so it's a lot of different ways that you can stimulate an audience but to be real fuck anybody that don't that 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 gets tired of seeing you promoting the same shit Nothing like yo you you only worried about niggas that want to see everything you doing you know what i mean and not to say it like fuck them but you get what i mean your, your focus should be on your core fans. Your core fans are going to support you because they know where you're trying to get to. Exactly. Like, I be I be thinking that, too. It's like, support black business. Like, you know, I support y'all business. Right, right. If I see y'all post something that's like, oh, y'all selling lashes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I might, I, might, I might like it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, if yeah. If I got a home girl, I might send those. Straight it up. Me, if I Straight got up. some. But, you know, that's what I had seen. I seen a um, reel that said that, like, you can support in any way. Let mm -hmm. it be a like, comment, a share, anything like that. So, yeah, that's real. I had seen something, uh, well, it wasn't even something. It was the, it was how uh, TikTok, they've been like blowing up like random ass, like old songs. Yeah. So the other week, uh, what's this name? What's this, uh, Miguel? It was a Miguel song. It's called Sure Thing. Mm -hmm. It was an okay hit back in the day, but it came out like 13 years ago. I don't know. Sure Thing was pretty fire. But I, it, I fuck with that record. But it, now. Just, it just now got on the Billboard charts because it's TikTok crazy. like 13 years later. Yeah. Um, like it was a crazy. fire song it back was, in the day. I thought song. it was already on the charts, but yeah. apparently it just now got on the charts and it came out 13 years ago because of TikTok and like Miguel started like pushing it. He's like, oh, niggas, listen, you fuck with that? That's crazy. I'm about to push this 13 year old song. Yeah, you know? straight up. Straight yeah, up. bread off that. It's crazy to think Cole was, I mean, I mean uh, Miguel was 13 years ago, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, time flying, yeah. Like a much. motherfucker, man. <laughs> Y'all saying Miguel, you saying that's a hit. I'm like, I ain't never heard that song. I what? Like, I mean, <laughs> this six. love is a sure thing. <laughs> what you, what you, 13? You like six years old? So you yeah, yeah, out. yeah. Damn, not a, that's crazy. <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> man, I feel like an old nigga now. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's funny. But, um, Nah, man. Um, like like he said, TikTok definitely is a huge platform. But shit, Twitter. Are you active on Twitter? Man, I got locked in on Twitter. I was on Twitter for like the memes, really. Like, yeah, just for the fun of it. But like Twitter really has a base because Twitter got that raw, like raw reaction. Yeah, like, yeah, for real. sure. They not gonna sugarcoat shit. They don't care if they support you or not. Them yeah. niggas gonna retweet and speak their piece. But um. Now, one reason why I always recommend Twitter to any and everyone is because you like Twitter is one of those places to where you can connect the um, the missing person. You know what I mean? Um, there's a uh, there's a great book by Robert Gladwell called The Tipping Point, and it talks about the six degrees of separation. Six degrees of separation is basically you can meet anyone in the world that you want to. 
you're only disconnected by six a matter of six people the the challenge is finding those six people but uh robert gladwell wrote this book the tipping point and the way that he articulates everything is so profound because he talks about how something so small made a huge impact one of the um uh first stories that he mentioned was of uh like a amish dude in omaha nebraska who really didn't have much interaction with anyone trying to get a letter to someone he never met in new york so he sent it to his neighbor his neighbor sent it you know he just he wrote a, a cover letter basically to everyone to put back into the letter and ship and it basically just said yo help me to get this closer to new york you might not know who this gentleman is but if you can help me get it closer to new york i'm sure it'll arrive you know what i mean long story short he got there he was invited out yada yada so to to me how that relates in in music and you know just people's personal endeavors it is just a matter of you being as consistent enough to say I'm gonna put out enough content that everyone has the opportunity. They can help me to push it to that to that one person I'm trying to meet. You know what I mean? So if you say you're trying to meet Jay Z, you know, with that last project, shit, go ahead and start building a new promotional plan, something that doesn't cost as much money, ways that you can, you know revitalize an older record you know what i mean and give it new life uh start looking at your newer songs you know what i mean because it's a lot of opportunity and twitter is one of those places again to where i feel like that time is cut in half mm -hmm. one person that doesn't even follow you might have fifty thousand followers and see your tweet and put yeah. you on the map you that's know what i mean retweet. so yeah yeah that's crazy for real like shit. look at superstar uh the rapper Man, bro, superstar don't blew up so fast, bro. Over overnight, yeah, and crazy. and I'm a, I'm gonna be real. I'm gonna be real, man. That nigga is only hot, which is crazy today. Like <laughs> that nigga I'm only not, hot because of that shitty ass haircut. I'm not familiar. Who is that? that Mama, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, you okay. raised a gangster. <laughs> oh, I hear that every day. I, don't, I didn't know that. Yeah, was, hold I, on I, I, I just hear the shit. I ain't think some of that shit. I'd be like, is this even a real song? Yeah, that nigga blew up, bro. Like I I, I kind of felt the same way. I thought it was a parody. Yeah, I just thought it was just, just like a I thought it was like a joke at first, but so um, just piggyback off what Joe said, like what's some new shit that you're working on right now? Oh, uh, really? I'm just working towards just monthly releases as many as I can. You know what I mean? But I'm trying. I got I got an album in works. You know, I ain't gonna you know display too much information about that. <laughs> drop, but uh, you know that's that's in the works too. For sure. More collaborations, really. That's really what I want to lock into. You know many as i can really definitely uh how do you go about getting your shows and such as of right now like is it is it you reaching out to people is it you know building networks to where a group of you come together and put put your put your own shows together or? yeah so actually you know i got a promotion company that's what i was talking about earlier when i mentioned the pope boys we all got like pope boys promotions so right we throw our own parties in the um city as well so you know like we can put together a show and things like that but really we just go about like putting together parties and stuff and that's what I use for my promotional content realistically mm. like you throw a party you can get a camera out there and make some hard every time you know yeah, all yeah. you need is the motion you know 100 percent. I mean? but yeah when it comes to like shows specifically I just reach out myself really just to whoever I can and you know I got my artist connections within FAMU who you know they're performers too and things like that so you know if they have a uh, opportunity they'll you know relay that to me and stuff like that right right that's yeah. dope that's dope. So with the monthly release, you just don't drop like one song here and there, just like I'm thinking. I'm thinking like I'm thinking two. I'm trying to work at two, two. minimum. That's better but, than nothing. To be yeah, honest. for real. Niggas, they drop. They do like <laughs> one want. record a year. You know what I mean? Like niggas will drop one song and think that they own. You know, so. Nice. Cause I feel like if you drop like two songs a month and maybe like one, maybe have a video mm -hmm. or like a video one song here and there like it's gonna be impossible not to blow up right you absolutely today everybody has an opportunity and that's real shit. you know what i mean it's not it's it's a lot of success stories and it's not as hard as it once was uh one of the big things today is having a story having um you know relatability a good head you know what i mean pause uh good head on your shoulders <laughs> you know to be able to see things in the future and and just navigate your brand in the right direction yeah, i think right. that's the big thing but again man i, I 
so far, man, I gotta say, yo, you doing a great job for 19, and sure, you to be yeah. doing a lot of this by yourself, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, shit get hard, really. I ain't gonna 100%. That. The, the rapping itself is a hard industry to yeah. stay positive in, so. Exactly. <laughs> what's, the, what's the hardest part about the game? I say really just getting it to the next level as in like valor, you know, for certain people. Like certain mm. people, that, you know, it's, you know, realistically, the, the rap game is like an ego driven thing. Like yeah, right. it's levels, you know what I mean? If you're, if I'm trying to reach out to someone up here, it's like, what do I have down here that's making you up here feel like I can. I can match with you. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? So I think that's really just the hardest part is like, saying okay you know i want a videographer because at the end of the day if you work with a videographer they have a certain fan base they're gonna come to your videos mm -hmm. so yeah. is that because the video gonna be hard they enjoy their videos they come to your music boom 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 but it's like making that next step of saying okay like how do i reach out to these people and how do i actually reach people that's gonna put me in the right spaces and you know like making sure i have the content behind myself to yeah. make sure that you know I'm not just reaching out and I look like some dude that's still rapping on SoundCloud or something. Which, right, right. No hate, no hate. Yeah, Everybody's nah. Everybody's still rapping on SoundCloud. But, <laughs> you know, y'all gotta get a DSP, gotta, please. Gotta, yeah. Please get I on mean, that as soon as that, possible. That's your best advantage. <laughs> that shouldn't even be an option no more, to be honest. You're absolutely right. They talking about getting rid of SoundCloud, so. Damn. Yeah, that's how serious it is, because it's... It's so easy these days. Like, yeah, get music up. Like if you not if you don't have music up right now, it's like what well, you you can't be a rapper for real. You're not committed truly. Yeah, that's real. Yeah, and it's true. a lot of fake niggas messing up the game too. True indeed. A lot. <laughs> it's a lot. They messing up all the streams and shit. They need to pick up a music business book and lock in and get their royalties and shit. Like for real. Man, talk about it. Yeah, you know what I mean? Talk Sound about exchange. it. Y'all need to lock in, huh? Hey, look, remember this nigga 19. Now hey. he got he, he he got laps on some of y'all, you know what I'm saying? Y'all better lock in, man. No cap. Nah, for real. I definitely salute you, man. You got a go-to producer you working with? Oh uh, yeah, my boy Fulio, no cap. Every Fulio. time Fulio made it, um, he got some hard hard hitting shit he just uh had a i think he had a placement with wham spin yeah wham spin okay uh, i think that's his name wham spin or some somewhere around there yeah, yeah, yeah but yeah he had um he placed them and every time i get a beat like it was crazy i didn't even realize that it was his beat at first like i was on youtube just looking at beats looking yeah. at tight beats and stuff and it was just hitting it, it the beat was called tallahassee i'm like okay this, <laughs> if I don't use this for this, me yeah you know what I mean? it's crazy <laughs> but i was streaming i'm just listening to that film like yeah nah this this it and then turns out um i had actually met him prior to finding the beat but like i didn't make the connection right that they were you know in the same thing so then i had bought the beat perform it i posted he looked at the story he said Fam, this my beat. I'm like, hell yeah, shit, this you? I'm like, that's crazy. <laughs> but yeah, nah, he produced that and he just produced my recent shit with uh, 350. Like, everything he made, that shit be just like thumping, like, really. Like, yeah. So I fought with him. That's yeah. dope. That's dope. Y'all gonna lock in for a project? Man, hey, Fulio, look. <laughs> right into Fulio. that camera. <laughs> Fulio, talk to me, bro. You know I'm trying to, you know what I mean? I'm trying to, though. Yeah. Hey man, we gonna we gonna when we put this we Fulio, put, we gonna put some pressure on you, nigga. You put, don't want these Duval County <laughs> niggas at your door. We gonna put the clip on, up. Man. We gonna put the clip up. We gonna add them in the bottom. Like, yeah, lock in. Let's lock get this in, whole Fulio. project straight no, up. Man. Straight up. It's a sign, man. Not for real. Yeah, man. So uh, you got to give us something, man. Leave us with something. You know, what are some things that you got planned for this year? Man, really, just progressing this as fast as possible. So I got, you know, I got um more collaborations lined up. I can't say too much about who, but I'm looking, I'm still reaching out to people, bigger artists too, like really big artists. Like, you know, I'm trying to get that out. Yeah. And realistically, I'm just, you know, making sure my fans know who I am as a person and they like have a connection to the music. Cause at the end of the day, you know, it's art. So I'm trying to make it relatable. I'm trying to make it something you actually enjoy and you know, you, you can consume. Right, so, right. I don't want to make nothing you can't digest. I want something that's digestible, really like you know content it got some substance to it but that's really all i've been focused on just making sure, sure everything is just you know that shit every time yeah so yeah you, man. you got two fans right here man we fucking for, real. Guys, for, real. for real for real for real man yeah, i had to lock in i had really fucked with the um with the um way you had went about like presenting it um to me when we had the conversation and shit. i was like okay 
yeah, this really um, you know, this this makes sense. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I said, yeah, these this got to be a good podcast. And I was already watching y'all shit and everything like that. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. we pride ourselves. We keep it professional. We don't when yeah. we work with artists, we want to work with you. We want to yes. better the artists, and we want to better ourselves. We don't want to just sure. be out here just like oh, we just interview a nigga, whatever, a clip. Exactly. Hey, internet, exactly. Good interview. Get up out of here. Nah, we want to work with you. We want to build. <laughs> Most of the people that we interview, we still got good connections Great with them. Contacts, they hit us up yeah. all the time. So yeah, that's 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 what we need in Florida right now. We need like actual platforms that better the artists and not just worry about views and whatnot. So yeah, man, and um. <clears throat> When we get done, I'm gonna I'm talk to you a little bit more. But uh, like I say, meeting you in person, hearing—I mean, you a very humble dude. You know what I'm saying? And and I salute you just for how you carrying yourself. You got a great understanding of the game. You know what I mean? Um, <clears throat> you gonna go through the ups and downs. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot that that transpires throughout. Uh, you know, a, co- a career path and any any choice, right? But with rap, it can be uh, difficult, but it, you're doing all of the right things very early on and i mean if it don't happen overnight my brother it's gonna happen quick for you i can tell you that hell yeah over time everything take time you know yes sir and that's really what i made sure to lock in on because shit, if you don't start then you, it, they, like i seen something said it's never a good time to start anything. never it's yeah. never gonna be a good time so yo just, you'll never be set for anything like never. as soon as you spin that bread something comes up every time every time <laughs> <It's gonna laughs> But nah, I mean, one of the reasons why I say overnight, man, is I look at it like this, you know, a couple years from now, you're going to be looking back on this and be like, damn, at that time, I was hoping and and wishing it came to fruition, you know what I mean? And now I'm rocking it, I'm living in this shit. So time is is really a a perception. And I think that we all kind of got to get that realization to where it does take time. But at the same time, yo, because time moves so fast. It's no time before you realize, you know, you done made it. You done got the way you wanted to be or at least in the realm of it. So I think that's really like one of the things that I have to like make sure I zone in on is that idea of you still have time. Like at the end of the day, you have a lot of time. Like I know I see other people in the comments, they saying, you know, it's people that learn stuff like playing the guitar at 30 and stuff mm-hmm. like yeah. that. You know what I mean? So and become learn, amazing. Yeah. You know, like really good. They just didn't know they had the talent behind it. So, you know, I just have to really like make sure I realize, you know, even though, you know, I'm just starting and it's, it's coming along and stuff, I got to like, I got a whole like path ahead of me. Yeah, you, you got know? a long road, bro. Yeah, for real. But you know, I just take in everything. I take my losses how I take them. I don't really, it ain't really losses, it's lessons. You know, they say that, but you yeah. know, every time. Nah, I think that's important, man. It's a reason why we got cliche statements. You know what I mean? So <laughs> I don't never, I don't never fault nobody for like bringing that shit up or whatever. Look at people in no kind of way. Like I think it's dope when you remind yourself of things. Like I gotta tell myself every day, patience is a virtue. If I don't, I get pissed off like <laughs> too that, quick. I be in traffic, bro. bro. Every time. <laughs> <laughs> when I was and coming no. over here, they was on the bridge tripping. They sliding on the I ten. I'm like, come on, yeah, yeah, yeah. Slow down. <laughs> I, you know, I drop a fin, so I'm really sliding. Right, with, right. With them, but they in a Jeep Cherokee hitting. Yeah. What you did? One thirty. Like, right. Yeah. Oh, it'd be crazy. I'm telling you. Yeah, I'm driving wild and shit, man. Yeah, especially in Florida. Oh yeah, Florida got the worst drivers ever. Gosh, too. These niggas don't care. <laughs> I swear they from and it be it be really the people from out of state. Too. Yeah, yeah, it's, that's it's it. So many people like Tennessee, Arkansas. I just seen a lot. North of people Carolina, there. shit, New York, yeah, everywhere. Oh yeah, it'd be funny because it'd be every time a nigga be about to hit me. I look at their license plate. It always be either a North Carolina plate or a Virginia plate. Yeah, right in that every time. I'm like, yeah. Every time, I'm like man, stay your ass up there with your not driving ass. Man. Not for real. That shit funny. All right, bro. This was a good ass interview. I'm gonna let you look into that camera right there. Promote everything. I know you just go ahead and plug single. all your shit, man. Everything. Shit, chance. All right. Hey, y'all know what it is, man. It's Mr. One K. We're here with it with Random Acts of Podcast. You know, y'all can follow me on the ground. Keanu 1K. That's on all platforms, streaming platforms. Mr. 1K. Check me out, man. Y'all know what it is. Yes, sir. Hey, that was a hell of a drop, my brother. Yes, like, yeah. shit. That was the best drop I think we done got. I had to get yeah. locked, man. I had to lock in. <laughs> y'all know what it is, man. We on. <laughs> hey, man. Shout out Random Acts of Podcast. You know what I'm man. saying? Yes, we appreciate yes, you, sir. brother. Yeah. Yeah, so, look. 
y'all, y'all hear it here, man. He definitely got the REOP stamp, man. Y'all go and check out both projects. Uh, Thousand Roses just dropped, so y'all tap in with that. He got the singles coming. Uh, Mr. 1K, yo, I dub you, man. You up next, yes, my brother? Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. When you drop that project, we might have to make that drive up to Tallahassee and fuck with you. I'm telling you. Bro. Hey, shit, keep us posted on your shows and everything, man. So Yeah, I got y'all. I'm going to get y'all lined up on one of them parties for real. We be getting lit. Yeah, say less. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, it's been another episode of Random Max of Podcast. It's your boy, Ampavelli. Mr. J. Mr. 1K, man, y'all know what it is. Yes, sir. With all that said, we out.